Hidden beneath the soil of Ethiopia lies a vast deposit of white gold that has captured the attention of global superpowers. This isn't just any mineral, it's lithium, the lifeblood of the 21 saint century green economy. And as the world scrambles for it, China is executing a continent-wide strategy to secure the resources of the future. This has put the United States on high alert, forced to play catch-up in a resource competition it can't afford to lose. So how did this East African nation, known more for its ancient history and coffee, become a new front in the escalating rivalry between the US and China? What happens when this lithium revolution gets underway? And what does it mean for the rest of us? The answers could reshape the global power balance for decades to come. The white gold rush. To get a sense of what's happening in Ethiopia, you first have to understand why lithium is one of the most critical resources on the planet. It's been called white gold and the new oil for a reason. Every time you pick up a smartphone, use a laptop or see an electric vehicle drive by, you're seeing the power of lithium. It's the key element in the lithium-ion batteries that run our modern world and the entire green energy transition. The demand for this mineral isn't just growing, it's exploding. Fueled by the global shift to electric vehicles and renewable energy storage, the need for lithium is projected to grow sixfold by 2035. This frantic growth has sent nations scrambling to secure their own supplies, creating a geopolitical chess match where every new discovery can shift the balance of power. This brings us to Ethiopia. Deep in the Oromia region, about 600 kilometers south of the capital, lies the Kenticha mine. For years, this site was mainly known for producing tantalum, another valuable metal used in electronics. But explorations have confirmed a far greater treasure, an estimated 87.7 million tons of lithium-bearing ore. Now, to be clear, the ore grade itself is moderate, at around 0.78% lithium oxide, but it's the sheer size of the deposit that is turning heads. Suddenly, a nation not typically on the battery supply chain map found itself sitting on a mineral deposit of immense strategic importance. This discovery places Ethiopia in a position of incredible potential. The government has made developing its mineral resources a national priority, with the Minister of Mines calling lithium the fuel of the future. With the world desperately searching for new sources to feed its insatiable lithium appetite, the Kenticha mine is no longer just a dot on a map. It's become an important new front in a resource rush, drawing the eyes of the world's two greatest economic powers. The question is no longer if the mine will be developed, but who will control it? China's grand strategy. China's deep interest in African resources is no accident. It's the result of a deliberate long-term strategy to dominate every link in the green energy supply chain. While the West was focused elsewhere, Beijing was playing the long game across the entire continent. It's a masterclass in economic statecraft. For years, China has been embedding itself into the fabric of African economies. You can see it in massive infrastructure projects like the Addis Ababa Djibouti Railway, which connects landlocked Ethiopia to the sea. These projects, often funded by Chinese state-owned banks and built by Chinese companies, create the goodwill and physical infrastructure needed to transport Africa's mineral wealth back to China for processing. This playbook is active all over the continent. In Zimbabwe, Chinese companies have spent over a billion dollars in the last few years to acquire and develop lithium projects. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, which produces the majority of the world's cobalt, another key battery mineral, Chinese firms now control a huge portion of that output. While the main African lithium rush is currently centered in countries like Zimbabwe and Mali, Ethiopia is seen as the next frontier. And this brings us back to lithium. China's dominance is staggering. It may not mine the most raw lithium globally, but it has strategically cornered the most important part of the process, refining. The vast majority of raw lithium from around the world is shipped to China to be turned into battery-grade chemicals. The US currently imports a huge portion of its lithium-ion batteries from China. According to some industry reports, the majority of new battery mega factories scheduled to come online in the next few years will be based in China. This is why its interest in Africa's lithium is so significant. 
By securing the source of the raw materials, China can feed its massive refining and manufacturing machine, solidifying its chokehold on the entire supply chain. It's a strategy designed to make the world dependent on Beijing for the energy transition. As the world races towards a green future, China has put itself firmly in the driver's seat. For the United States, China's tightening grip on critical minerals is a massive vulnerability. Relying on a strategic rival for the resources that will power the future of transportation, energy and national defense has set off alarm bells from the Pentagon to the White House. Washington is now in a high-stakes game of catch-up. The problem is one of deep dependency. For years, the US and its allies outsourced manufacturing to China for lower costs. Modern military power is increasingly battery-powered. This realization has sparked a flurry of activity. This is why Ethiopia's Kenticha mine is strategically important for American interests. It represents a major opportunity to help diversify the lithium supply away from China's direct control. Australian and American investors are already competing for a stake in the Kenticha project. An Australian firm, RWG Lithium, and a New York-based investment firm, Arena Investors, have been making rival bids to revive the mine, even writing directly to the Ethiopian Prime Minister. This is part of a broader push across Africa, with the US championing initiatives like the Mineral Security Partnership, a coalition of countries aimed at building critical mineral supply chains outside of Chinese influence. The race is on. But building a supply chain from scratch takes years. Right now, the geopolitical chessboard is defined by physical mines and processing plants. For America, failing to secure a foothold in places like Ethiopia isn't just a missed economic opportunity. It's a strategic risk that could leave the nation dependent on its primary global competitor for years to come. While superpowers circle overhead, the future of the Kenticha mine is a matter of profound consequence for Ethiopia itself. For the communities in the Aromia region, this lithium deposit presents a monumental choice, a path toward potential wealth or the risk of exploitation and environmental damage. The history of the Kenticha mine is already marked by conflict. In 2017, previous tantalum mining operations were shut down because of local outcry. Communities reported that the tailings dam, which holds mine waste, was polluting their land and water. These aren't abstract concerns. Lithium mining can be incredibly damaging, leading to severe water contamination and soil degradation, if not managed carefully. The discovery has also created social friction. After the mine officially shut down, conflicts broke out as local groups engaged in illegal mining, fighting over a resource they felt was theirs. This gets to the heart of a question that haunts resource discoveries across the developing world. Who will actually benefit? Will the wealth from this white gold build schools and hospitals? Or will it be siphoned off, leaving the local people with polluted land and broken promises? Adding another layer of danger are the health risks. Studies of the Kentika ore have found that radioactive elements like uranium and thorium are present alongside the lithium. This has raised concerns about exposing mine workers to radiation levels that could exceed international safety standards. On top of all that, the management of the mine itself has been chaotic, plagued by legal battles and allegations of mismanagement. Recently, both an Australian firm and the American firm Arena Investors have made competing bids to take control and get the project moving again. For the Ethiopian government, the challenge is immense. It must navigate the ambitions of both the US and China while addressing deep-seated local grievances. It needs foreign investment, but it also has to enforce strict environmental and safety regulations. If played right, the Kenticha mine could be a powerful engine for development. If played poorly, it could become just another tragic story of the resource curse in Africa. Navigating this complex situation will require a delicate balance of innovation, good governance and smart international cooperation. One of the most promising paths is through technology. The environmental damage from old school mining isn't a given. New extraction technologies are emerging that promise a much lighter footprint, like direct lithium extraction DLE techniques that are faster and less harmful to the environment. But technology isn't a silver bullet. 
The real challenge is governance. To stop the wealth from being captured by a select few, Ethiopia has to build a framework of transparency. This is where the competition between the US and China could actually create an opportunity. Ethiopia is in a position of leverage. By encouraging a competitive environment, the government can demand higher standards, greater community investment and stronger environmental protections from any partner. The story of Ethiopia's Kentisha mine is a snapshot of the new world we're entering. One where the global race for green energy resources is redrawing the lines of power. What began as a geological survey has quickly become part of a high-stakes geopolitical contest between the United States and China. China, with its long-term strategy, has a formidable lead in the race to control the building blocks of the future. The US, now awake to the threat, is scrambling to respond with its full economic and diplomatic power. Caught in the middle is Ethiopia, a nation grappling with its own internal challenges while trying to manage a once-in-a-generation opportunity. The path it chooses will not only shape its own economic future, but will also send ripples across the globe, influencing the cost and availability of the very technologies that will define our clean energy world. The lithium revolution is here, and this corner of East Africa has become one of its most critical new battlegrounds. The global resource competition is just getting started. Who do you think will come out on top in the quest for Africa's lithium, the United States or China? And can Ethiopia successfully navigate this geopolitical tug of war to its own advantage? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you want to stay ahead of the curve on the global power shifts shaping our world, be sure to like and subscribe.